We welcome back to the show former acting U.S. Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. Attorney General, it's good to see you. First, this story. President Biden, he's now bringing back Trump's Title 42 policy. He's been fighting that in court. That's a pandemic border policy. But, Attorney General, when you heard he, the president wants to start rapidly deporting illegal immigrants from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela under that policy, what, did you, what was your reaction when you heard this? Well, it's first of all, it's too little, too late, and it's good to be with you, Liz. I just don't believe this president when he puts out a new policy and it and it looks a lot like the policies we had in place in the Trump administration. I just wonder why we've been wasting our time these last two years, uh, you know, and, and really making Americans less safe. We're you know we have stressed uh, border patrol agents beyond the breaking point, and I, I look at some of these plans where people can apply online and then come to our country. Uh, via airplane, I just, you know, I don't think that's a good policy. I think what you need to do is you need to have a system that works for the American people. We've talked about this many times, Liz, and it ultimately, I just don't trust that Joe Biden really wants to do anything other than get rid of the videos that are coming out of, especially Texas, of all of these hundreds of illegal border crossings every day, all day. Yeah, he's confusing the issue. He's talking about an app where you can pre-apply for asylum from overseas, and then he's opening up a new legal path for 30,000 illegal immigrants a month from those countries that he's going yeah. to deport, to, you know, illegal immigrants uh, from Cuba, Nicaragua, and the others. Uh, you know, the other issue, too, is, is he politicizing this issue? Because Nikki Haley is now slamming the president going to the border city of El Paso as a photo op. Attorney General, you and I have talked about this. The president has only gone to the border once since he's been in D.C. since the Nixon era. He did a drive-by in 2008 in El Paso. Why is he going now? Is it before a 2024 announcement? Is this all politicizing a crisis? I think it is. You know, I hope that he's going there to see what the chaos is in the city of El Paso, his policies have caused. Because, I mean, as you see, it looks like a third world country, as we've seen some of these videos and images coming out of El Paso and many of these border towns. And it's too bad because, you know, those taxpayers deserve uh, the same thing that all Americans deserve, which is, you know, a, a secure border. But, you know, I think really if the two policies I'm going to be watching very carefully is he's going to reimplement what's sometimes called the safe third country or the country of first uh, encounter, which means that you have to apply for asylum in Mexico if that's the first country you encounter. And the second uh, policy I think is also going to be equally issue and interesting, and that is you have to come in in uh, ports of entry. You can't cross illegally anywhere along the border, only the ports of entry so, to apply for asylum. Those are two policies we put in place that, that help standardize uh, the system and bring some discipline and security to the southern so border. So it sounds like he's bringing back three Trump policies. It's Title 42 yeah. for those four countries, also remain in Mexico, and the one you just cited. Yeah. Yeah, I don't believe him on Title 42. He said in his press conference today that he doesn't personally favor it. He's waiting for the courts in June. Uh, Supreme Court's going to have a hearing and ultimately is going to decide. I think he has the discretion okay. to repeal it, and he has not said that he's going to take back that repeal. So, you know, you wonder if the president will visit the overcrowded detention centers there, because on his watch, the U.S. is seeing the equivalent of two Nebraskas. Some, some say it's, it's three Nebraskas crossing including the gotaways. I mean, and then yeah. there's their fear that he, they're going to try to paint a picture at the border, claiming all is well by emptying out the tent camps and centers, releasing detained illegal Ill aliens to give the illusion that it's under control. Now, Attorney General, that's happened before. Border officials have warned that that has happened before. It has happened before, and like this is a game that they like to play where they suggest that just because one piece of the system is working, that the whole system is somehow stable and secure, and it's not. And remember, one of the real challenges at the border is that these illegal immigrants are paying cartels, and they are being used as pawns to surge in certain areas of the border. So that takes all the resources away, including air marshals, I might add, which make yeah. our planes less safe. But then they, the fentanyl and the methamphetamine and all the drugs come in through other places that are, are no longer guarded because they're having to deal with all of these people yeah. that are coming across the border. Let's watch the Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas finally admit the border is broken. You're going to see the president finally claim he does intend to go to the border, but then you're going to hear him downplay his border crisis as, quote, a situation. And then you're going to hear him talk about this new app for asylum seekers. Watch this. There's no question that the, um, the number of encounters that uh, we are experiencing at the border is straining our system. 
Uh, and this harkens back to um, the question you previously posed, uh, which is we're operating uh, uh, within a system that is fundamentally broken. Why go to a border state and not visit the border? Because there's more important thing going on. They're going to invest billions of dollars in a new enterprise. The Vice President, I'd like to talk to you about uh, how the, my administration is dealing with our situation on the southwest border. Title 42 is going to go away before the end of the year in terms of the Supreme Court, my prediction. And then we're going to have to use Title Nine, or Title uh, Eight, Eight, right? Am I right? Yeah, Title Eight, Eight Nine. <laughs> if they're seeking asylum, they can use an app on their cell phone called CBP One. You know, this all feels really confusing, right, Attorney General? He doesn't know which title is in play. You know, talking about an app. I mean, the president claimed the GOP is not serious about the border. Adam Schiff claimed the border has been a priority for Democrats, and it's hard to do anything on a single-party basis, when President Biden did 300 executive actions on his own to weaken the border. Well, Democrats spent trillions of dollars on their own. Uh, none of it went to securing the southern border. So, I mean, it went to securing other countries' borders, but not the United States of America. I, you know, Joe Biden doesn't have credibility on this. To call this a situation when we've had f uh, estimates five million people come into this country illegally through our southern border, uh, it's just it's extraordinary. I mean, that, that must be the understatement of the year, and the year is still young. So I don't I expect that, you know, he will continue to... Uh, not be shoot the people straight no. here in this country and that this is really not going to be fixed, and they have no intent to fix it, let's be honest. And to, you know, Pew Research polling shows that the U.S. is a generous nation. America welcomes immigrants. It just doesn't mm -hmm. want women, children, seniors who deserve asylum get shoved to the back of the line by MS-13 gang members or 98 terrorists yeah. crossing, trying to cross last year, criminals crossing. There's also this. Let's watch the White House now, in the past, they claimed the border is secure. Now they're claiming it isn't. Watch. We have a secure border. The border is secure. The border remains closed. It is not open. We are turning away the majority of adults. We have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have, he doesn't have a process in place. And for now, the Homeland Security Secretary, Attorney General, to say it's fundamentally broken after he gaslighted everybody for ye a month saying it's secure. I mean, the Democrats, yeah. as Jason Chavis has said, they love to say they're the good guys, the party of compassion, the soul of the nation. But they don't care what happens once these people cross the border or even what happens to them as they die and get assaulted on the way. They're stuck in squalid conditions, sleeping on the street, abandoned in the cruelest fashion. I mean, you saw what the Massachusetts Democrats did, as Jason Chaffetz pointed out, when they showed up, migrants showed up, they immediately loaded them on buses and shipped them out as soon as possible. You see the Democrat governor of Colorado doing that. And Lori Lightfoot and, and Mayor Adams in New York City, they're really angry about all this. They're saying this is an embarrassment. It is. And, you know, the, to your point, we are the most generous country in the world. We admit over a million people a year legally and lawfully. But we have to have a system that not only uh, serves the American interest, but also uh, is not prone to exploitation by criminal cartels that sexually abuse these migrants, that steal their money, that, that use them as part of uh, a broader uh, you know, drug trafficking organization. And so that's where, you know, I, I just, again, I've, I've worked very closely in this when I was at the Department of Justice. There are ways that, to, to secure this border, and this, this, this administration just is not serious about actually securing the border. Got it. Attorney General Matthew Whitaker, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you. Come back soon.